Celebrate two icons of Hollywood when we commemorate the 80th anniversary of Universal Pictures classic horror films, Frankenstein and Dracula. And enjoy even more chills when we unearth a trove of classic creature thrills at the Monster Palooza convention to celebrate the legends of horror on this edition of Out and About. today at the Pomona Fox Theater. It's uh, February 20th. It's a beautiful day and we have a lot of people here to see Dracula and Frankenstein, the original 1931 Universal films. And uh, it's a little burst of classic monsters in February. Hundreds of fans line up at the Pomona Fox Theater to experience two Hollywood horror classics that were released within the same year. Uh, February 14th, 1931 was the actual release date of Dracula, so we tried to get it as close to that. 1931, February 14th, Dracula came out, so here we are 80 years later. Not exactly to the day, but we try to get it close. You have a big crowd uh, wrapped around this theater and a lot of uh, memorabilia, I see. we got a lot of people. It's uh, out the door right now, and it's not even time to let people in, so uh, hopefully we'll fill the place up uh, with monster fans. This is a beautiful old theater. Yes, the theater itself, Pomona Fox Theater, was opened in 1931. So the theater is as old as the films. So <laughs> what better place to have a film screening from 1931 films than a theater that was built that year. So yeah, it worked out nicely and the, the Friends of the Fox, who's a new organization, started um, creating film screenings of classic movies last year. And I came to one and I just said, hey, if you guys are interested, I'm a film historian. How about uh, doing some uh, fun films? Uh, today is the first one of 2011. In addition to witnessing these classic films on the big screen, fans were treated to an assortment of classic horror memorabilia featuring these two Hollywood icons. And a pair of special guests added a touch of class to the ghoulish proceedings. We have the families of the actors who made these great films uh, way back when. Uh, Bela Lugosi Jr., who's Bela's son, and Sarah Karloff, who's Boris Karloff's daughter, uh, she'll be here, and she was born when they were filming Son of Frankenstein. And I think uh, Bela was born just before that, um, in the 30s, so they remember all this stuff really well, so it's a treat to have them come out uh, to join the celebration. What is it like for you to be here to celebrate the 80th anniversary of the release of that special film? Well, it's wonderful to have Dad have so many fans after all these years. Uh, I think uh, his, his memory is going to be kept alive by the fans, and they're, they're, it's the most important thing. Uh, I believe he's famous the world over. Well, he is famous the world over. I get fan mail from all over the world. What was it like for you uh, as, as a child and uh, being involved uh, in and around your father and his work? Well, you know, um, Dad always got a lot of attention where he went just because of his voice and his stage presence and so uh, he always got a lot of attention and and so uh, you know as a kid you don't necessarily you know want all that attention but uh -huh. but, it, but it was very interesting uh, at home he was a very good dad and, and uh, had a good uh, relationship and you do have I know everybody said it you have his eyes oh, I hope yeah. so <laughs> 
I'm thrilled to be here since I wasn't there when it was made and most people ask me, oh, what was it like on the set? Mm. And I tell them, no matter how old you may think I am, I was not born when this film was made. No, you weren't. But I noticed there's a certain streak in your hair that looks familiar to me. Is, that, is there a reason for that? No. God gave that to me. Old I, age and decadent living. Oh, it had nothing to do with uh, the, bride. the Bride of Frankenstein. No. But you are the daughter of Boris Karloff. I am, not the daughter of Frankenstein. That's right. However, he did uh, make, I think, three movies, is that right? He did. He made the original Frankenstein, and then the Bride of Frankenstein, and then the Son of Frankenstein. Now, when, when you go into a restaurant and you, and you give them your name, do they think you're kidding? Well, sometimes I use my maiden name, but it's easier for a girl to disappear and hide. I can use my, my married name. Well, you can, you can turn it on and off, huh? Can't most women. <laughs> now, you have seen this movie, I believe. Yes, I have. Many times, despite the fact I hate scary movies. You hate scary movies? Is that why we're out in the lobby and you're not in there being frightened? That's absolutely right. I don't like scary movies. I leave the room during Murder, She Wrote. Well, I kind of like to have these little secrets uh, from the Karloff family. <laughs> That's the only one you're going to learn today. <laughs> Hopefully people are excited to see these films on the big screen uh, as, just as much as we are. I'll be the one in the theater most excited to see it on the big screen. I've never seen the films on the big screen before myself. I'm of the TV age who saw the films when they were shown on um, you know, broadcast television in the 70s. So that's how I learned about the films. I was a kid in New York in the early 70s and you know, I saw all these films on local TV stations including the Abbott and Costello films. And one of the first ones I remember seeing was Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein, which was a spoof send-up of the monster films even though it was also scary. And that became a big, a big deal for a young guy. I dated it to probably about 1973, 74 when I first started seeing these. So I've been a big fan, it's pushing 40 years, and I've been writing about this stuff since about 1995. Inside the darkened theater, the audience relishes each classic image as both features relate their respective tales of gothic romance horror and cautionary morality lesson, themes which resonate even today. Bad jokes, bad jokes. After the screenings, guests are treated to a question and answer session featuring Sarah Karloff, Bella Lugosi Jr., and a panel of horror film fans and colleagues. During the illuminating session, each share anecdotes on their famous fathers while expressing their passion to maintain the legacy of their father's work. It seems as if these monsters of the silver screen are even more popular today as model kits and other items continue to attract collectors. It is a passion that has fueled the imagination of artists and filmmakers today as each new generation discovers and embraces the power of these gothic horror legends. What was uh, involved in uh, creating this? First building an armature, then slapping clay on it, getting all the forms right, and then after the sculpture's done, you make a silicone mold, and after that's done, you start casting. How long does it take you to do that? About nine months. Wow. So here it is, and it's a, uh, revolving, and uh, there's a little bit of a flower there. I think I remember that scene. That was uh, a scene in the movie where he's uh, throwing daisies into the water with the little girl, and he runs out of daisies, so he thinks she'll float, and he throws her in the water, and she doesn't float. Probably the most childlike scene in the movie that portrayed his innocence, and that's what I kind of wanted to capture. When Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi created these classic performances more than 80 years ago, they probably never imagined how influential their work would be for future generations. I first saw my first horror film when I was six. I found my first horror magazine when I was eight, and I was hooked. I wanted to be a makeup artist from, from that time on. 
So pretty much all my artistic efforts have been towards getting into the movie industry and doing this for a living. The sculpts that I do of movie makeups now are um, maybe odes to the uh, makeup artists who did them. I'm a big fan of the old uh, Universal Monsters. I wrote a book about the man who did all the makeup. Uh, his name was Jack Pierce. So he created all these characters, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Bride of Frankenstein, Igor. That's how I got excited about it all. But I've been watching these movies since the early 70s. My father would be absolutely amazed at the longevity of his, of his career, the, the long legs his legacy has. But he would be so overwhelmed with gratitude at the fans. It's, it's due to the fans. They, they have kept his legacy alive. Um, the families are so grateful. They owe such a debt of gratitude to the fans, to the magazines, to um, the people who come and see these films, who attend the conventions, who um, are so gracious and, and, and wonderful to the families. Uh, it's, it's overwhelming to us. It really is. And my father would say, what's the big deal? An actor can't fix a sink and a plumber can't act. And that would really be his his heartfelt uh, feeling because he was the most modest man and the most private man. Uh, he was a typical English gentleman and he loved his profession. He felt he was the luckiest man on the face of the earth to be able to spend his life doing something he genuinely loved and then as he would say as an aside and then be jolly well paid for. <laughs> there was a lot of people playing the Dracula character but Dad set the bar for it, and uh, it, it's hard for anybody to do that part without picking up some elements of Dad's performance. The Homer chills continue at a ghoulish gathering in Burbank, California. Stay with us as Monster Palooza unlocks the door to its infamous House of Horrors when Out and About continues. <laughs> <laughs> 